Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Welcome back to Theory of Pets. Today I wanted to talk about digestive health. This is a topic that is greatly underserved in pet foods and something that really isn't talked about a lot or given the focus that it needs. A lot of pet owners don't realize that Digestive health is something that isn't just good for your dog's gut, for, you know, digestion, urinary tract health, that kind of stuff, but it's really good for your pet's overall health and well-being. A healthy digestive tract can have all kinds of widespread benefits, including boosting the immune system and helping in nutrition absorption. So today I wanted to talk to an expert in the pet industry. I spoke with Ray Kawano. She is uh, at just 26 years old. She is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Heed Foods. They are a newly launched dog food brand. Um, She used her love of animals and entrepreneurship to uh, launch this brand. It's a it's a dog kibble with a focus on digestive health, and she's really passionate about digestive health and nutrition for canines uh, in general. So I wanted to talk to her today to find out a little bit about the benefits of proper digestive health, what you can do to aid in your dig- in your dog's digestive health, and what part nutrition plays in that. So hi um, everyone, my name is Ray and I am the CEO and founder of Heat Foods. My path in the pet space goes way back. Um, I mean, I was raised in Indonesia to a family of animal lovers and we were always taught to love our pets like family. Um, A couple of years ago, my dog, um, my uh, Shih Tzu, Mika, who I considered my little sister, passed away. And I mean, the more we looked into it, it was the more we realized that it was because we were feeding food that was terrible for our health and we didn't even know it. Um, The more I looked into the industry, I realized how broken the whole pet food industry was and how the majority of of pet foods available in the market were actually terrible. Um, And I mean, the few, and that's not to say that there aren't any good pet foods out there, there are, but trying to find which ones are good and trying to find one that, that's available near you was, was extremely difficult. And so um, I realized that right then then that I wanted to go into the, the pet industry, specifically the pet food industry, so um, you know, all of our, our pets could live um, long and healthy lives. Um, and so my background was in venture capital investments and luxury product development. And after that, I spent some time um, consulting for several pet-related companies, ranging from pet food products to to an e-commerce product. And um, after graduating from business school, I uh, moved to LA and started Heat Foods. Wow, fantastic! A lot of people, it seems like, you know, no matter what product they they start or what company they start, they are inspired by things that have happened to them and they can't find what they're looking for on the market. So they just sort of create their own, which is uh, not something that's very easy to do. So kudos to you for that. Of course. Thank you. So you talked a little bit about what inspired you. It was your own story with your own pet. Um, How did you get started because obviously you know you can't just create recipes and expect them to be nutritionally balanced for dogs so I'm I'm sure it took a lot of time and a lot of education and research of course yeah so um when I started when I was really looking into what kind of pet food company I wanted I was looking at the human space the baby space and um kind of uh, you know pulling from my own experience as well and i mean there i mean as, as you know there's so many pet food brands out there and so i was thinking how could i differentiate myself um and in doing that i realized that there was this there was lack of understanding on um gut health and the microbiome you know we're over the past couple of years we're starting to see that really develop in the human and, and baby space and i thought hey you know this this needs to be in this needs to be there's an opportunity for this in the dog space and so i um as, as mentioned i uh, you know 
worked for a, a couple of pet related companies and so um, you know networked and networked spoke to a ton of people and um, my search for the perfect pet nutritionist was took a very long time but um, you know met this man he's, he's from uh, Montreal and he is so knowledgeable on the on on the uh, canine microbiome and I decided to uh, work with him to develop our food. Since then, I've partnered with them very closely to, to develop all of our recipes. Um, and then, you know, he's introduced me to one of the, the leading um, uh, pet food manufacturers with an impeccable uh, history of, 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 of food safety and quality. Um, and then, uh, you know, developed our food from there. Um, I think what really keeps me up at night is, you know, thinking about the health of dogs and, I mean, God forbid if there's some sort of a, a, a recall of sorts. And so um, all of our food, every single batch goes through extremely uh, rigorous testing um, for um, digestibility as well as food safety. And it's, I think, really important for, you talked a little bit about, you know, when you were starting, you were thinking about what would distinguish you from other brands. And that's something that, you know, I think everybody looks at when they're looking at different products, whether it be for themselves, their family, their pets, you know, what makes one product different than the rest. So you took this kind of unique approach, which really focused on digestive health, obviously the the quality of the food and the quality of ingredients, but there are lots of other companies that focus on high quality right. products with fresh foods and mm -hmm. whole food ingredients. But you took this new approach and, and sort of wrapped all that up and looked also at the, the overall digestive of health and so why is it so important for pet owners you know if you're feeding a high quality food most people don't even think mm -hmm. about digestive health so why is it important to think about that as well as the food that you're feeding right um no that's that's a great question um i mean recently there's been a ton of research now that shows how in both humans and dogs maintaining a good digestive health can really impact everything from better energy coat to even better temperament um, I mean, many parents are mistaken when they think that, um, you know, d food for digestive health is only important for dogs who have shown visible issues, but really this should be, uh, digestive health should be really something that all pet parents should be thinking of regardless of whether or not their dog is currently having diarrhea or whatnot. Um, the digestive tract is where the body absorbs the nutrients from its food. I mean, if you think about, I mean, you can think of it as the gateway. But if that's broken, it really doesn't matter what amazing food or vitamins or, or treats you're giving your pup. Their body is not going to be able to, to digest and get what it needs. Over 70% of your dog's immune system lives in your pup's gut, so it becomes even more important for, um, for you to focus on digestive health if you have a young pup or for um, aging pups as well. We can't stress this enough. I mean, focus on feeding your pup good food, one that heals the gut, and you'll significantly reduce the heartaches and vessels that you'll experience when your pup gets older. And I think that's important to make sure people understand is that it, it you can feed the healthiest ingredients, you can feed the nutritionally balanced diet, you can work with a nutritionist to, you know, find a food that meets all your dog's nutritional needs. But if his digestive tract isn't healthy, it's not that you're not feeding the right products, it's that he's not getting right. Like, the right things out of those ingredients so that's really important for for people to understand and i think that was a key for me when i was looking into feeding my dogs a better diet i think we all sort of as pet owners you you that light bulb kind of turns on where you realize that you know you're not feeding the best diet and and so you start to do the research and there is a lot to it and there's definitely a lot to learn um, but that's really key is that the ingredients don't aren't going to matter the quality of the ingredients if your dog's digestive tract isn't healthy so you have to do both hand in hand correct so all pet food products obviously we wish in a perfect world would aid in healthy digestion unfortunately not all of them do can you discuss some of the common ingredients that are found in pet food that aren't healthy for a pet's digestion yeah so um when we think about it it's not so much what other pet foods include, it's more what they don't include. Um, so, I mean, as you're, you're probably aware, um, there are three main components 
to job food that they, they should be really looking at your protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Um, protein, I think, you know, a lot of our parents are, are, are very uh, comfortable and, uh, and have a deep understanding of, you know, these are the building blocks for your pup's muscle, gives them energy, and it's really what gives um, the, the food its flavor. Um, but what parents, what pup parents need to better understand is the carbohydrate component. So dogs need carbohydrates, but not any carbs. The kind of carbs they need are the kind that are fiber rich um, and with a low glycemic index. That's why he be focused on using ingredients such as brown rice, sweet potato, and, and um, flax seeds as well. Um, we also include a proprietary blend of prebiotics um, in our food. So we use na all natural ingredients like yeast extract, thyme extract, chicory root, and all this cre um, helps to create an environment that is. Um, where uh, good bacteria is is able to grow. You know, we, we do, these ingredients do everything from lowering pH levels to increasing the production of certain fluids to allow um, you know the the good bacteria to grow and the bad bacteria to be flushed out. Excellent. So you obviously take a lot of pride in the ingredients used in heat foods. Can you tell us a little bit about the ingredients in your products and why you choose the ingredients that you do? Of course. Um, all the ingredients that we include in our food are very intentional and are there because they serve a very specific purpose. Either they deliver some critical nutrient or they deliver flavor. Many dog food brands out there fill their food with empty carbs, but we don't do that. I know that in, in um, human food, there's definitely a notion that um, when reading the uh, back of labels, less ingredients is, is healthier. But I personally believe that that isn't applicable to dog food. I mean, humans eat a variety of things every day. So for any given meal, it makes sense that um, that it's derived from a handful of ingredients. Dogs, however, are eating the same thing every single day, oftentimes for many, many years. And so the food that they eat must be complete and balanced and filled with all the variety of nutrients that it's humans you would get in 365 a day. So, um, sorry, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I guess I, I wanted to say, say that um, for dogs, unless they have a specific issue, a limited ingredient diet may not be um, the most appropriate for them. So at HEAT, um, you know, we, we I mean, if, if you look at the, the back of our labels, we have quite a bit of ingredients in there, but all of them are extremely high quality ingredients. Um, I mean, the first ingredient, first and foremost ingredient that we use is, is fresh meat. Um, we have two recipes, um, two main recipes for our kibble. We have a chicken-based recipe and a salmon-based recipe. Um, we personally love chicken. It's one of the most efficient sources of protein and one of the most gentle on your pup's stomach. Also to mention that its impact on the earth is considerably much less than um, beef production. Um, we also personally love salmon because, it, uh, because it's packed with omega-3 fatty acids. It's great for, you know, coat, skin, um, and as well as, as um, immune support as well. I mentioned earlier about the importance of choosing carbohydrates that are fiber rich and have a local stomach index, which at HEED we use carbohydrates like brown rice, barley, and sweet potato. And we also include various antioxidant rich superfoods. We have blueberries and flax seeds, which are great for your pup's immune system, kelp, um, which is great for your pup's digestion, and include uh, linolenic acid, which supports your pup's hormone balance. So really, we have a lot of um, ingredients there, which uh, you know we think that have a very unique nutrition that in total creates a really balanced meal um, for your pup. And when it comes to sourcing ingredients, do you source from certain countries or source use certain companies that source from certain areas? Yeah, so I think, um, so we are, so for our non-meat ingredients, um, we basically just choose whatever uh, mark, uh, whatever we, we source from whatever country has that that um, the best quality of that ingredient. When it comes to our um, protein, we are extremely cognizant of um, only sourcing from um, North America uh, suppliers. 
sound fantastic. And I know probably most people listening uh, have heard all the recalls and all of the warnings from the FDA and that kind of things about um, different ingredients from certain countries like China where their laws and their uh, food regulations aren't as strict as they are here. Uh, but it is important to learn about the ingredients that are in your dog's food. Can you tell us a little bit about why pet owners should be focused on the ingredients in the food uh, that they feed their dogs and not just in the food, the brand, um, or the food itself? Not all dog food um, is, is, is made the same. And reading the ingredient labels and guaranteed analysis is really the first step to, to better health. Um, right now, we have a lot of dogs that, um, that uh, many pop parents say are allergic to chicken. And um, this is, uh, and and when you actually really look into it, it's not that these pups are allergic to chicken, it's that they have grown a sensitivity to chicken from eating the same, uh, because they were being fed chicken for years and years and years. Um, this really highlights the importance of really understanding the, um, really understanding the, the ingredients in your food because um, you really do need to cycle the ingredients in your food or else your, your pup will grow sensitivities to it. Um, so for, for us, um, we really recommend switching up your protein, um, at least your protein, once every six months or so. Um, and I think really understanding what, what's in the ingredients would really also be beneficial when, you know, your dog is, is sick and whatnot and, you're, and, and you need to go through the, the process of identifying what they are allergic to. Do you have any tips for what pet owners should be looking for or should be trying to avoid when they're reading the packaging and uh, the list of ingredients on the dog food? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, first and foremost, taking a step back, um, I think, unfortunately, with dog food brands, to a certain extent, price is a reflection on quality. The better the quality of the ingredients, the more expensive it is to make the food, and the higher um, has the, the price. Um, I think once once you're able to, to identify the brands, um, you know, which, which you think fit with it within that band, um, next what I actually like to look at is the guaranteed analysis um, as the first filter. Um, I personally like to look for food that has a minimum protein content of 29%. And then after that, then what, what I like to look at is the, is really focus on the first eight ingredients. Protein has to be the first ingredient. Um, I personally like to uh, like food that start with with fresh meat as the first ingredient. Then um, you know protein labeled as as meals are okay, but at all costs, um, I would suggest to avoid all byproducts. Next, um, and certainly I think not not least, and I think it's really helpful now that we have um, you know. The, the wonderful research, resources on the internet is to read reviews, reviews, reviews. Reviews are, uh, you know, by and far the best indication of, of, of quality, um, and I think is, 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 the, is the best way to, to really, and especially reviews that talk about um, user experiences that are similar with, with experiences that you're going through with your pup, I think um, are, are the best indicator on whether or not this food is going to be good for your pup. Absolutely. Reviews are very important. You know, other people are going to have experiences with that food, some good, some bad. Every dog is different. So um, I agree. Reviews are, are really important to check out and, and see what other people think and uh, how other dogs have enjoyed the food or not enjoyed the food. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else that you'd like for our listeners to know? Since starting this this company, I think it's, it's been a really tough and and uh, it's it's been a tough and, and interesting journey. But really, what what really keeps us us going is the, the feedback that we get from customers. Um, it's interesting because many of the customers who end up becoming key customers are those who really went through, who have basically tried everything else and it didn't work, and you know stumbled on us. And um, you know, we, we get these emails saying that you know before he. Uh, uh, once we switched to heat, my dog's um, um, epile uh, my dog's um, uh, epileptic symptoms have have decreased. Or since switching to heat, um, my, my dog's digestion has significantly improved, and he seems so much happier. I mean, we we get these emails, and um, these are really what, what what keeps us going every day. And so, I think um, you know, on on our our side, um, 
you know, competition is, is, is extremely tough, but, um, you know, we, we get these great user feedbacks and, and this kind of lets us know that we're moving in, in, in the right direction and makes us feel really good at, at, at the work that, that we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I know a, a lot of pet owners um, who, you know, similar to your story, didn't realize that there really was a problem until there was a problem. Their dog got sick and they realized that, you know, it could have been maybe not avoided, but definitely prolonged had they known what they were actually feeding their pet for all those years. And they do the research and they, you know, look into everything and they want to make homemade food, the healthiest food they can. And they try to work with nutritionists and things like that. But one, it gets very expensive. Two, it's extremely time consuming and it just, you know, there's so much to learn and to research and it can be really difficult right. to try to do it on your own. So, you know, looking for a company like Heed that kind of takes the legwork out of it and, and does all that stuff for you, that the quote unquote hard part of it, um, you know, for you, it's, it's nice to know that there are people like you out there who have been in those shoes and you're trying to do that work for other pet parents who are in the same boat, but they don't have time to do, you know, that part of it. Yeah, no, um, I, I, uh, completely agree. And I mean, I think if, I think the one mentality, if I could really help change and I wish I had a different mentality. Um, you know, when, um, I experienced that, that I experienced with, 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 uh, my dog Mika is really the, the thought process that, hey, this food is good enough. I really think that when it comes to nutrition, we really shouldn't settle and we really shouldn't wait until there's visible symptoms. Um, and so really kind of starting on, on, on the right foot, um, with, uh, is, is what I, I with, um, what, what I hope that um, all parents would, would uh, be looking to do moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love it if that's the the message that people get from this podcast is, you know, pass that on to friends that you know that might be thinking about, you know, getting a pet or people who have recently got a pet, people that have had a pet for a long time but maybe need to make a change, you know, talk to people, educate them, help people understand the importance of nutrition. And um, you guys on that topic have a great website. So uh, there's a link to that under the podcast as well. People can check that out for more information and, um, you know, reach out ask people if you if you need some help or need some advice there's some contact information on your website there's contact information on our site as well so um, if you have any questions feel free to ask thank you again to ray for being a guest on the show today i really appreciate it if you follow my podcasts or uh, my articles on our sister site topdogtips.com you know that Nutrition for pets is kind of one of the soapboxes that I stand on and preach a lot. Um, digestive health is so important. Proper nutrition is so important. And people just don't think about it until it's too late, which is really sad. Uh, a lot of the expenses that we incur at the vet, a lot of the expenses that we incur as far as you know our dog's long-term health, we have to feed supplements and do things like that. It's because we didn't feed proper nutrition from the beginning. So I highly highly encourage every pet owner to do your research, talk to your veterinarian, talk to a canine nutritionist, feline nutritionist, somebody that's an expert in the field and you know, learn as much as you can learn. That's our job as pet owners is to take the best care of our pets possible. And one of the easiest way to do that is just to take the time to educate yourself on nutrition. If you guys have any questions, as I said, there are links below the podcast to our website and to Heed's food website. Uh, while you're on our website, if you wanna leave any comments, questions, suggestions, if you have uh, any any topic ideas for future podcasts. I'd love to hear those. So thanks a lot, guys. While you're on there too, if you could leave a quick review uh, for us, however you listen to the podcast, if you listen on iTunes, just leave a quick review. That really helps us uh, to obviously get more listeners. But also uh, when I reach out to experts like Ray, I can show them that you guys are out there listening and you want to hear more. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back with another hot topic very soon.